Hello, lovely friends. Um, it's It's been a while since I've done a haul on my channel and it's definitely been a while since I've done like a proper blind buy haul. I used to do those quite a lot because there were loads of cheap perfumes to try. I do keep a list now on places like Makeup UK. I keep an eye on Direct Cosmetics always because I really like them. And also Natino. Um, and the thing with Natino that I hadn't realised until quite recently, annoyingly, else I would have already returned things, is they do let you return perfumes after you've opened them. As long as you haven't kind of used loads of it, you know, as long as you've just tested it and you don't like it, they will let you return it. They have a really good return policy. So I thought there's some of the stuff here. There's a couple of things that aren't technically blind buys. They're things I've smelt before. Um, and then there's some that are blind buys. So let's get started with one that I have smelt before. This is Aqua de Gio. Didn't know. Aqua de Joya, I think is how you say it. Aqua de Gio is the is the male version. Um, so this was down, this is on sale for £35 at the moment. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to put this up though, so I apologise if it's changed. But on the Tino, the one that you get in, in the UK, this was £35. And I've been wanting to get a bottle of this for ages. Now, the last time I smelt this was when it was in the square bottle. Um, and now, this is it, Eau de Parfum. So, let's have a look. These are now in different bottles than they were, I think, when these scents first came out. Absolutely gorgeous bottle. Isn't it so beautiful? I love these bottles absolutely stunning so the square ones were nice as well but these are even prettier so aqua de joya i have smelt before but i was kind of surprised by how this smells now i don't know if this is because it's a reformulation or because i'm now very sensitive to certain scents but this smells this doesn't smell good to me anymore now i had the la rive dupe of this um, I ended up passing that one on because I wasn't really reaching for it. But to be honest, I think I'm probably going to buy that one again because it's about, I think it's like a tenner for that particular one. It's called, um, it's just called Aqua nowadays. I think it's La Rive Aqua. But this one, the notes in Aqua de Joya are Amalfi Lemon, Mint, Water Jasmine, base notes of vanilla, uh, Virginia Cedar, Brown Sugar and French Labdomen. And, um... I'm getting a real bitter woodiness that almost smells a bit like that tarry aroma chemical that I don't like nowadays. It's not like, it's not entirely that smell, but I feel like, yeah, I don't know, this smell, this doesn't smell, from what I remember from the square bottle, this doesn't smell as sweet as it used to. It doesn't smell like there's as much of the brown sugar in it. So it's a bit sharper and it's just very, very woody, which is weird. I don't remember it smelling like this. So again, assuming my memory is, is serving me well, the La Rive dupe is actually quite a lot sweeter than this. And I kind of like that one better. So I can't even believe it, but this is, this is the one that I was like, oh, definitely it'll be for, well, apart from the other one that I've already smelt before, I was like, oh, this is definitely just getting added to my collection. But to be honest, I don't really like this. I find the lemon quite sharp. The water jasmine in this is fine. It's, it doesn't, it's never really bothered me too much in this. The mint is subtle. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not digging this one. It's, it's, it's a pretty freshy and everything, but I think compared to other freshies I've got, I'm just not digging how this smells. So as much as I cannot believe it, and I'm sad because I absolutely love this bottle, I'm going to send this one back. <laughs> um, yeah, Aqua de Joya. Has it changed or have I changed? I don't know. But either way, yeah, that's not going to, it's not going to stay on with me. It's just not... It's not my jam, it seems, anymore, hmm, which is very surprising. So, what's next on the list? Oh, yeah, the next one is another one that I um, I had a sample of, fell in love with it. Um, so, this is CK1 Gold. So, I'd been looking at this one for ages, and partly because, to be honest, I absolutely love this bottle as well. Um, and then, funnily enough, this is a perfume that I saw 
on um, the perfume nest with Chris and she was saying she really loves the perfume but she hates the bottle whereas I um, I'd never actually smelt the perfume until I saw that video and I got a sample of it because she's really sold it to me um, but I have always loved this bottle so this is CK1 gold and obviously this is a unisex perfume so I was really happy to have been able to find this little 50 mil because I didn't really want a massive bottle of this. So it comes in this, I think it's a fabulous bottle. So it comes in this bottle, it's got a screw top and then you can put the sprayer in, which is what I'm gonna do now. So this is a fig perfume. Oof, I was gonna see if I'm actually able to get this lid off. There we go. Oh, it's really pretty. Um, let's put that little lid there for now. Let's put this in and we'll spray it out. So I had the little sample of this. I asked my husband to try it as well. And he was, I think it's not that he didn't like it. He just was like, nah, it's all right. Smell amazing on him. It smells really nice on me. Um, but it's definitely properly unisex. And I think some women would find it ever so slightly too masculine. Um, it's possible some men would find this also slightly too feminine. But CK1 Gold is just, I find it very scrumptious. It's a lovely freshy. So this one has in the top fig, bergamot, or sage. You get all of those things. Middle notes, neroli, jasmine and violet. So then you've got those kind of fresh florals. And when I first met it, I was like, yeah, it's nice. It's a nice fig. It's nicely done. It's not too earthy. But then it, the more it dries down, the more beautiful it gets. And it doesn't list musk, but this has something in it that feels slightly musky to me. It might actually be the wood because it's got vetiver, guyac wood and patchouli. And actually sometimes vetiver, I don't know. It's anchoring the base down in a way that gets softer and nicer and yummier on the skin. And the patchouli never bothers me in this either. This is a lovely, lovely freshy. It's definitely a bit woody. It's definitely a bit green. It's definitely got some very gentle florals. It's got a little bit of sharp citrus, but it's got that beautiful aromatic sage. And then it's got this lovely fig note, which is, it's not quite philosikos levels of fig, but it has that same kind of not cooked fig, but fresh fig with a little bit of greenness and a tiny bit of earthiness, but still quite fruity. Yeah, and this one, it's it's perfectly nice on the on the strip, but it's at its best on skin. This is really addictive on skin. And I wasn't sure, I was like, maybe this is a bit too masculine for me, but I haven't stopped thinking about it. Like, I think it's such a pretty perfume. And I think it was about £16 or something. So that one, I had to, I had to have it and I want to keep it and it's just delicious. So let's move this one over here. That's going into my little collection. I've put the lid on now, so I don't think I'll be able to... Yeah, I can't close it anymore. <laughs> um, I shall put it to one side. All right. So next up, another one I've been looking at for ages, and I've always been put off because people vote that jasmine is the strongest floral here. And, you know, there's some perfumes that jasmine don't bother me in and others that it really bothers me in. So, But this went down to 25 quid, and I, and I think it also maybe had a bit of money off. There were a few things I got here that had like extra money off for some reason um, with a code with like a some kind of spring code so I thought I'm going to try this at last and this is Marry Me from Lonvin a, a terrible name a horrible font and to be honest I hate this bottle but I wanted to know what it smelled like and also because someone has compared this to um, Dior Forever and Ever which I love and I have to say I don't actually think this smells like Dior Forever and Ever, but I think it has the same feel as Dior Forever and Ever. So this is a cool purple liquid. I see it's not a good bottle. Um, I often quite like Lonvin bottles, but this one, not so much. So Marry Me, and this is the original one. I think there's been a couple of flankers, but um, this is the one that's kind of just generally available. So... This is bitter orange, peach and freesia in the top. Middle notes of jasmine, magnolia and rose in the mid. And then the base is musk, virginia, cedar and amber. Now, it definitely has that same 
kind of sweet spring blossom, transparent, feminine, slightly ethereal scent to it that I think is beautiful, right? But it doesn't actually smell exactly like um, uh, Dior Forever and Ever, but it is definitely in that same kind of general scent profile. It's got that same feel to it that's just super, super pretty, girly, like I said, blossomy, lovely petals, spring-like, with just a hint of something kind of juicy, fruity, almost aquatic in kind of slightly watery feel that it has. But it definitely has that the set a very similar freesia to Dior Forever and Ever. And then it has um, a, definitely some jasmine I can smell and some rose. And those are the notes, along with musk, that you get in Dior Forever and Ever. So this definitely has that kind of feel to it and it's very nice it's very juicy it's light it's pretty but the thing is with this and I just couldn't <laughs> sort of couldn't believe it and I was like oh my god I think this is so beautiful I love this I'm keeping it and then I thought wait a minute that's because it smells a lot like something else that I have in my collection so oddly enough oh my god I mean it's almost exactly the same perfume <laughs> It smells so much like this. This is star fruit and white flowers from the Aqua Colonia range by um, Forty Seven Eleven. And honestly, it's these two smell almost identical, <laughs> which is crazy. But it certainly explains why I love the st um, star fruit and white flowers as much as I do. I absolutely love that perfume, and it definitely. I've I've always said like it has this kind of. Um kind of mock orange blossom smell about it like it's got this beautiful kind of white floral spring bush scent but that kind of makes sense because I, I find the smell of freesia when it's done in a really kind of watery fresh way with a bit of fruit it always smells like spring blossom to me and I always knew that there was a bit of I could tell there was some jasmine in this but now I'm thinking I think the white flowers I wonder if there's a type of white freesia but it honestly, it's it smells like this. So I'm like, oh. because I love this scent profile so much, I kind of want to keep Marry Me. But if I'm being honest, it's not really much stronger. Um, I mean, it's all I mean, it's almost identical. So I'm trying to work out what to do about this at the moment, because I don't really like the bottle. But I love the perfume inside it. But I already have the Aqua Colonia Star Fruit and White Flowers. And they do smell exactly the same. And to be honest, the lasting power between these two, not that different, if I'm, if I'm really being truthful. They've got a very similar longevity, which is kind of, you know, a few, maybe a couple of hours. Not very long. But I don't, yeah, I'm thinking about this one, but I highly recommend it. I think it's beautiful. If you want something that's going to last for ages, probably not going to be for you. Although it is relatively cold weather when I've tried this on my skin. So take that with a grain of salt. It might be really good in, in warm weather. You know, it might last longer. It would be perfect for a wedding. I mean, I'm talking myself into keeping it because I do think it's absolutely lush. But yeah, I'm not sure about Marry Me in terms of staying in my collection. But oh my God, I would just happily recommend this to anyone. If you... If you love the idea of like a light and slightly angelic blossomy floral that's not shampooy or soapy and is more on that kind of aquatic kind of watery sheer level, you know, then marry me. Yes. <laughs> yes to that one. All right. <laughs> so I've got another floral now. I'm going to get the notes up. So this next one is another one I've had on my list for ages. Another one. And this one actually has a gorgeous bottle, gorgeous box. Um, and I just wasn't quite sure how I was going to feel about it. But I saw it for again for a good price. I think it was about, I think this was £25 despite being 100 mil. So this one, oh, it's a monster of a box. This is La L'Amour by Lalique. Um, so there's a few Lalique perfumes that I really like. There's a couple that I love. I love Le Parfum, which comes in basically the same bottle as this, same shape anyway. Um, and I love Amethyst. I've also got, and I will review it, but I got a secondhand bottle of Lalique Lalique. So I will talk to you about that one. And that's a very kind of vintage smelling floral. 
this one I wondered if it would be too sharp for me and again it's voted as having jasmine as the strongest floral but I kind of feel like this is quite equal between jasmine and tuberose myself so okay first up shall we just look at this gorgeous bottle I mean what a stunner look at that bottle it's beautiful oh absolutely glorious that one love it so l'amour by lalique has notes of neroli bergamot and rose in the top and then the middle notes of jasmine gardenia and tuberose and then base notes of musk sandalwood and cedar so i've got the dry down here because when you first spray this you definitely get those sharper notes you get the neroli and the bergamot and it's quite sharp smells like a classic kind of um, not entirely white floral, but I guess a bit more of a white floral, like a fresh, sharp, slightly 90s unsweetened floral. That's what it smells like at first. A bit green, you know. And then the more it dries down, the more you start getting this tuberose coming through. And then you've got the musk and the woods and it gets softer and it gets sweeter. And this is one that, to be honest, I have kind of got the dry down a little bit now, but... Um, it was so much better on my skin. Like the, it just developed so much more um, softly and not quite as shampooy and more musky and sweeter when it was on my skin compared to when this is just sprayed on paper. So maybe don't judge it just from paper. But weirdly, again, it also has some similarities with Marry Me and with this it has a it has a few notes that come across really really similar but this one then has tuberose in so i'm trying to work out how i feel about this one because sometimes i struggle it seems from historic <laughs> perfume purchases with that combination of jasmine and tuberose it can cause me problems and although I think this is pretty, I don't know that I would comfortably be able to wear it because I there are some tuberose perfumes that kind of drive me a bit bonkers the same way that some jasmines do. And I just feel like maybe that is a combination of notes um, that doesn't necessarily always work for me, even though I do genuinely think that this is a lovely perfume. So it's just whether I would be able to kind of or want to wear it for a full day. I don't think it's too sharp. I don't think it's too vintage. When it's dried down, it's not shampooy. Well, <laughs> on paper, it's more shampooy than it was on my skin. But I also feel like I've smelt this perfume before, not just because there are elements that remind me of my Aqua Colonia and of the Lonvin, but in terms of like a jasmine tuberose, I do feel like this is a familiar scent. So, um, I'm kind of struggling to remember the perfumes, but like just offhand, the two that are springing up in my mind are uh, Covet, Covet Pure Bloom from Sarah Jessica Parker. This is less shampooy than that one, way less shampooy, but I really do think it has that same kind of feel. And also um, the Kim Kardashian Glam, except if you can imagine... Um, that one without I think there's watermelon in that one but the combination there of jasmine and tuberose with that kind of slightly watery floral with a bit of fruitiness this is that same kind of thing this you can definitely tell there's some fruit in this and it doesn't I think it's probably the tuberose giving it a slightly grapey smell yeah it's a grapey slightly bubblegummy tuberose but then it's not too far in that direction because it's also got the gardenia and the neroli and the jasmine but yeah this is not an unfamiliar scent to me and i feel like i feel like i've already tried a few perfumes that smell a little bit like this um and i tend to get rid of them because they just don't quite work for me or at least I like how they smell when I'm sniffing them, but when I wear them, I feel uncomfortable. But in terms of being a beautiful perfume, this is a beautiful perfume. And I think if you like a kind of slightly sheer tuberose and jasmine, um, and you like a fresh floral that isn't too sharp, that isn't too shampooy, but also isn't in intensely sweet, you know, this isn't like my way levels of sweet tuberose. This is a much more kind of subtle, classy, 
um, grown lady smell without smelling vintage. I don't think this smells vintage. It's very, very pretty. I just don't think it's for me personally. So this one, I think probably will go back. I'm kind of sad about that because the bottle is so gorgeous. Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend it. It's just probably not one that I would personally be able to wear, but I would, I think it's a gorgeous perfume. Highly, highly recommend it. All right. What have we got next? Oh yeah. Oh, this was honestly such a fun one. So um, this was a really fun haul. Okay, so we've got this one. This is Happy from Chopard, and this is the Bigar... Oh, how do you say it? Bigaradia? Bigaradia? So I've already had a couple of these. Um, what does it say on here? Huh. Okay, not much. Not much that helps with the actual notes. So I've had what's it called the lemon dolce i've had i've still got that one actually it's one that i'm decluttering though because um the cucumber in it is a bit much for me but uh i also tried the rose rose is it called rose or something um that one did not work for me it just smelled terrible on my skin it was a perfectly pretty again like very transparent rose perfume but it just smelled really bad on me um and this one I've been looking at for ages. I wasn't sure about it because it's got patchouli in it and it's got a few notes. I was a bit like, nah. but it also has honey and I've been on a honey kick. And this was, I think, 18 pounds and maybe with some discount as well. So I think it maybe cost me about 16. So I thought I'd try it. And also, oh, my God, I love these bottles so much. They're so beautiful. OK, now this is this is interesting to me. Um, and I'm still trying to work out how I feel about it, but I think I might like it, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> so this is the fabulous bottle. Isn't it beautiful? I love it. Um, so happy from Chopard, the bigger audio one. <laughs> I'm probably not saying that right. So the notes in this are bitter orange, neroli, green mandarin and carrot in the top. And then the middle notes are Orange blossom, honey, jasmine sandback, base notes, cedar, labdanum, sesame, patchouli. So, jasmine sandback, often a disaster for me. Neroli, I don't really like very much. Some orange blossoms I can deal with. Um, sesame can be a real problem for me, and so can patchouli. So, that is why it's taken me quite a long time to get this, even though I've seen it for bargainous prices quite a lot. Um, in terms of the way this smells... <laughs> beautiful beautiful glass lid when I first sprayed it I was like "Ooh, you can definitely get a bit of the the vegetable and the sesame going on here you definitely get a bit of like smelling a bit like a salad <laughs> but when I think about this one and I it's weird because I haven't seen anyone else um compare them so I'm not entirely sure if I'm just being a lunatic here but when I sprayed this on my skin and it dried down, I started to think of Hermes Jardin sur la Nil. Now, that one also has carrot in it, I think. Um, and it's really giving me that similar vibe. Um, I've actually got a sample of that. So at some point, I'll probably have to actually try and find that one and do a comparison. I don't think they smell exactly the same. But it's just what it put me in that same headspace as when I've worn that one. Um, and I do actually think that this is absolutely in that kind of realm in terms of the scent, you know, of generally of the Jardin perfume. So I think they're absolutely delicious. I'd have a lot of them if they were cheaper. But I think this would be a really good alternative, a really good affordable alternative to Jardin sur la Nil. And I do also think that although I think these are aimed at women, I think it's totally a unisex scent. You definitely get that orange and the bitter orange. I can definitely smell um, a Neroli that's not too green. There is a sort of slightly strange earthy sweetness from that carrot. There's a little bit of honey, but not very much. It's not overly sweet. It's just not sharp when it dries down, if that makes sense. It's just that honey takes off the edge. You can get a sense for the honey, but it's not like sweet, 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 you know. 
The jasmine's not overwhelming because I think the orange blossom and the neroli are far, far higher in the mix. And I don't really get lots of patchouli. I'm not finding it super cedary. There's a little bit of woodiness. A little bit of earthy, um, earthiness, maybe from the labdom and amber patchouli, but and the sesame is not bothering me either. So I think this one's probably going to stay with me just because I don't have Jardin Sur la Nil because of the price. But this one, I think this will do me well in terms of um, a good alternative to that. And I think that in warm weather, this might be really pretty. So, ooh, such a heavy bottle. <laughs> Yeah, so I think I'm probably going to keep this one because also I don't have a huge amount of freshies that are kind of orange blossom or neroli based because I do kind of struggle with them sometimes. But I do think that this one's really pretty. So I think I'm going to keep that one. Um, all right. So this is the, this is probably the main reason, to be honest, that I wanted to do this order. This has been in my wish list for a really long time. So... This is my first ever foray into Eisenberg perfumes. So this is called Jose or Jose. Um, I'm not sure the correct pronunciation uh, pronunciation of this. This is Eau de Parfum. And this is the one that's um, aimed at women. The one aimed at men, same name, is in like a black bottle. And then the ones that are aimed at women are in transparent bottles. So... As you can see here, it actually has the notes. So before I even take it out, I can tell you. Um, it has bergamot, lemon, mint and jasmine. And then it has in the middle, lavender, wormwood, coffee, mocha. And then in the base, patchouli, sandalwood, moss, tonka bean, vanilla, amber and musks. So I was taking a bit of a chance, but it was down to 25 quid for this cute little bottle. These are beautiful boxes. So it also comes, so at the top, it comes with this little booklet, which has all of the perfumes in and all the notes and all the information about them. So that's really, really cool because there are quite a few that I want to try from this place, um, from Eisenberg. So let's take this cutie out. Just look at the cuteness of this. Oh, my goodness. Oh, just adorable. Just a tiny little bottle. Little 30 ml. This baby. I am digging this perfume. So I was expecting, to be fair, to like this one <laughs> because of lavender. And I've been I've been on a honey kick, but I've also been on a lavender kick. And so I've really been wanting to try this one out I couldn't find it anywhere to test it I couldn't get any testers of it so I've been waiting for it to go down under 30 pounds and when it did I thought I'm going to snap it up and I'm going to give it a try so you do get a little bit of that mint you definitely get some lavender I do get kind of a coffee but it's more of a kind of creaminess I can definitely sense that there's tonka and musk in here I feel like there's vanilla but it's really nicely blended with that tonka. I'm not getting loads of jasmine. I'm not getting loads of wormwood. Wormwood often gives me a headache, whereas here it's not. Um, and what I'll say, <sighs> this feels to me like a very wearable version of Twilight from Lush. It is that kind of scent. There is a bit more of a kind of greenness going on because it has that mint but it's equally kind of as sweet and um, it's got a very slight powderiness. Oh, it's hard to get the lid off though. It's very sweet. It's very beautifully lavender. It, it's almost, I mean, it uh, in the same way that uh, Twilight does, it has just that kind of little bit of a hint of uh, Mong Lane. So it, it's not, the same scent at all but it has a little bit of that because it has some of the same notes um i think this is a really lovely interpretation of a lavender perfume i think that despite the fact that this one is aimed at women and there's one that's aimed at men this definitely could be unisex um <laughs> it's one that i feel like every time i sniff it i'm like oh yes that's lovely and i I really, I love Twilight, but I can't, I don't really wear that one on my skin. It doesn't really work very well on my skin, but I spray it on my sheets. Um, this also, there is a slight bit of 
uh, my chill out from Oriflame. That's a lavender perfume, but it's kind of less. This is like it's like twilight without the kind of aniseedy smell. But then there's a little hint of that kind of thing just because it's got that wormwood, you know. Um, it's like Mongolian without the licorice. If you see what I mean. It's beautiful. I love this. I'm really glad that I bought it. This one's 100% staying with me and it doesn't have any weird aroma chemicals in it. It's not like freaking me out. The wood isn't too much. The patchouli's not too much. It's not too earthy, but it's not too minty. It's not too floral. There's not too much coffee. It's just a beautiful, soft, slightly powdery, very sweet blend of all of it. And if you really love lavender perfumes, this is one to try, I would say. I think this is delicious. I'm really excited about wearing it to the point where I was like, maybe I should just wear this tomorrow. And I've only just got it today. Um, yeah, I, def I definitely think this would smell as nice on men as it would on women. It's super pretty. I wouldn't have been sad, honestly, if I'd have, if I'd have had a 100ml bottle of this, I'd have been like, cool, nice. Um, as it is, at least it's small and it will fit somewhere <laughs> easily. But yeah, a really lovely perfume. And I'm really excited to try some more of uh, this brand when I can. So I'm keeping a lookout because the only place I've seen them to buy like easily is on the Tino. But also um, they, these pop up sometimes on eBay. So I'm just paying attention. Seeing what I can find because, I, yeah, I think I think I'm going to have to try some more Eisenbergs. So, yeah, that is me. Um, these are all obviously my first impressions. None of these have had full full day wear tests um but yeah I mean this was this was a pretty fun haul the only one that I was a bit sad about was the aqua de joya and I yeah like I said I don't know if that's been reformulated and just has some aroma chemicals in that it didn't used to or whether it's just the case that I just didn't used to be able to smell them back in the day because that definitely was a thing there's definitely perfumes that now smell really synthetic to me that didn't used to um but yeah, apart from that, I think these are all really, really lovely perfumes, really beautiful. And I would happily recommend any of them.